Welcome to a new episode of Am The Week. Shark Week is sadly over, but we will once again be venturing into the depths of the ocean for today's animal, the Bobbit Worm. Also known as Eunice Aphroditois, the Bobbit Worm is a member of the family of marine polychaetes known as Eunicidae. As it is a polychaete, that means it's a type of bristle worm, and therefore related to a whole host of other marine worm creatures like the Christmas tree worm and the Pompeii worm. The Bobbit Worm is also known as the Sand Striker, and its more common name, the Bobbit, is actually thought to be a reference to a very famous legal case in the early 1990s. 1990s, where a woman cut off her abusive husband's penis. The reason this worm relates at all to this strange case is because of the bobbit worm's incredible cutting mandibles, able to cut its prey clean in half. However, it's not fully confirmed this is where the name comes from, though it would make sense. Typically, they are found in the shallows and coral reefs of the Atlantic and Indo-Pacific. Bobbit worms require sand to burrow in, and so they live in the benthic level of the ocean. They have also been known to live in and around dead coral. They don't want to be too deep down, away from all the prey, so they stay in the neuritic zone of the ocean. The maximum depth they have been seen is around 95 meters, but they could very well live deeper, as this is simply where they have been seen by humans, and as they are burrowing creatures, it's kind of hard to spot them deeper down. Shockingly, these worms can grow to lengths anywhere between a mere 10 centimetres to a scary 3 metres in length. Can you imagine 3 whole metres of this thing? The strange thing is, as they grow longer they don't get much thicker, and so stay this strange long thin worm. The scarier thing is that the only thing that regulates their growth is food availability, and so they could grow even longer, but we just haven't found one topping 3 metres yet. That also means that their burrows can get very long as well. The reason they burrow is crucially linked to their feeding practices. Bobbit worms prey on basically anything that brushes past them, from fish to seaweed, and so they are classed as omnivores. They are ambush hunters and so spend all their times in their burrows with just their antenna sticking out. When they are brushed against, they will strike out with their massive long bodies, reminiscent of the Exegorth from Star Wars, the big worm thing that Han lands the Millennium Falcon inside of on the asteroid in Empire Strikes Back. Their mandibles are incredibly strong and fold out of its head to slash at the prey. Small fish may find themselves instantly cut in half, however the bobbit worm is all too eager to attack things that seem way too large for it. Not a lot is known of the bobbit worm, but it's thought that they might possess some form of venom or toxin in its sharp mandibles that immobilizes its prey, as it has been seen to attack fish far too thick for its thin body and far too large to be properly cut in half. So they must stun larger prey with a quick cut to the body before dragging it down its burrow. This is also corroborated by the fact that if a human is bitten or stung by the many bristles down its body, it can cause permanent numbness around the bite, suggesting a form of toxin is present. Bobbit worms are broadcast spawners. This means that when they mate, males and females never actually touch. Females release a pheromone into the water that attracts nearby males. She will then release her eggs into the water and the males release their sperm. Doing this allows for very quick fertilization and means the bobbit worm don't require any external reproductive organs or appendages. Few will ever make it to adulthood as most eggs are eaten by predators floating around in the ocean. Bobbits have a whole host of adaptations, many of which we don't understand due to their elusive nature, but we know about their impressive bite and their toxin-filled stingers down their body. But one thing we don't quite understand is their rainbow coloration. We don't know if it's a sign of sex, a defensive camouflage, or for mating purposes, or any other use we haven't thought of. We also don't know why they get so long. There comes a point when surely their size becomes a disadvantage, especially considering only about 6 inches of the worm ever comes out of their burrow when they attack their prey. That's why it's thought that perhaps they don't stop growing as long as they have enough food. Bobbit worms can be a big nuisance to owners of fish tanks or aquariums who import coral and rocks from the sea. As bobbit worms have sometimes been known to live in dead coral instead of in burrows, if imported coral is not properly checked, you might just be adding an unwanted predator to your lovely little fish tank. Nuki Zoo in Cornwall, England fell for this trap. At first they didn't quite know why certain fish in their aquarium exhibit were injured, and why coral had been burrowed into and destroyed. That was until they found Barry, a four foot long worm that presumably had been added to the exhibit by stowing away in an imported rock or coral. The most terrifying bit is about how staff set traps to try and catch Barry, but Barry ate through them. The traps were pieces of bait with fish hooks tied to a fishing line, but Barry straight up ate the hooks and bit through the fishing line like it was nothing. Barry, in my opinion, was an absolute legend. To eventually get Barry out, they had to dismantle the entire exhibit rock by rock. However, I'm not entirely sure if Barry was a true bobbit worm. I found some conflicting sources, some saying he was a bobbit worm, some saying he was a different member of the genus Eunice. 
The problem with the name bobbit worm is that it is sometimes used as a blanket term for other similar looking worms, when it should actually only refer to Unis aphroditoides. In any case, the outcome would be the same either way, as even if it wasn't a true bobbit worm, it displayed the same behaviour and looks very similar. So take this as a warning to check your aquariums properly. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us.